Hey everybody, I'm Alan from You Do AV, and today is the day. This is the install that you guys ask about more than any other installation. How do you get a wire from an attic through the first floor into the basement, or how do we run wires in between floors, going floor to floor to floor? That's what we're gonna do today. This is kind of a tricky installation. Um, one of the reasons I didn't want to do this installation before, why I've kind of been holding off, is I really feel like for the more tricky installations, the one that holds a little bit higher risk, and especially if you're trying to minimize the damage, you should really have an in-wall scope. And fortunately, I think the cost of in-wall scopes has come down enough that it's not cost prohibitive for the regular homeowner to get before. It was pretty expensive and kind of only custom installers were getting them. But I think there's a lot of options out there. I'll talk a little more about the scopes and the one that I'm using. Um, but let's talk about this installation. But I did want you to know that we are going to use a scope on this install. So if you're hoping to not buy a scope or get around that, um, I want to tell you right up front that that's what we're going to do. So hopefully, hopefully you can see the value in that. Anyways, what we're going to do is we're going to take the wire from the attic. It's going to go through my master bedroom wall and then it's going to punch through the bottom plate in my master bedroom wall and it's going to pop through into the ceiling space of the basement and i've done some measurements and i think that ceiling space is going to be on the other side of this joist right here so these these beams that hold up the floor they hold up the ceiling down here and they hold up the floor if you're standing up on the sec uh, on the first floor um we call those joists so on the other side of this joist space I think that's where we're going to punch through. I'd love to punch through on this side, but we probably won't be able to. I don't think they line up close enough. So what the install is going to happen, we're going to go from the attic, through the master bedroom wall, into the ceiling space down here in the basement, which is going to be the other side of this, pop the wire out. It's got to run through this joist space, and then it's got to go right here. And on the other side of this, we're going to, get, we're going to run some wire for some outdoor speakers. Remember, I'm in a basement, so I'm underground right now. I don't want to go through the cement wall. This is like, I don't know, eight to 10 inches thick cement. I don't want to do that. But up here, this is not cement up here. So we can go through here and then we can go through the brick. We'll walk through the whole thing on the, on the outside of the house. We'll walk through the whole installation. Right now, I just kind of want to get you a general overview. We also need to put in some volume controls. Uh, we got a lot to cover. So let's go ahead and jump in right now. I can definitely tell you that when I get dinner, I'm the type of guy who always eats his salad first. I'm sure you can tell by looking at me, I don't love salad. So I always do the hard part first. I always do the hard part first, and that also is how I tackle projects. I always do the hard part first. I'm gonna give you guys a tip here. When you're doing an installation, it's really easy to get overwhelmed with the scope of the entire install. Don't look at the entire install. Look at trying to get from A to B, from A to B, from A to B, and as you complete a task, you have a new A to B. So right now, this is my master bedroom wall. My A to B is to get, I think the hardest part of this job is to get through the, the floor plate in the side of this wall and inside of that basement room I showed you guys earlier. So that's what I'm gonna tackle first. When I wired my house, I wired stuff everywhere. So I have a bunch of wires here. If you guys are subscribers to my channel, you remember that in an earlier video, we took this electrical outlet, we went sideways, then we went up the wall and we put a new outlet behind the TV. But I'm gonna use this existing hole and we're gonna try to go down through the wall in this existing hole. And I just wanna give you guys a peek on what I'm working with here inside of this hole. This right here is the wire, this white wire right here that's going this way. That is the uh, wire that's coming off of this outlet that we ran for the TV. These wires all here, they all go up to my closet. What's kind of a little odd about my wall here is I have a 2x4 in the back. And normally the 2x4s the are just sitting in the wall like this, you know, and the, the, the drywall kind of attaches to the 2x4s. For whatever reason, I don't know why, but I have a stud right there turned sideways in the back. So it's, this hole is a little shallow, um, but we're going to try to use that to our advantage. Uh, so let's go ahead and drill. Like I told you guys before, in this video, we're going to get into a little bit more of the custom installer stuff. And if we really want to do a good custom install job, we have to use custom install tools. So for this, I'm going to use this flexible drill bit here. I think this is a half inch drill bit. And I'm going to use that stud turned sideways to my advantage. 
if I push this bit into this wall right here, go down into the wall, get in there, you son of a gun, just like that, all the way down to the bottom, and then I put pressure, it's gonna drill down. It might drill into that stud a little bit, but it's not gonna go through the drywall on the other side. The majority of it's gonna go down. So in this case, that's really gonna kind of help me out. I know some of you guys are like, I don't have flexible drill bits. I don't know how I'm gonna do that. You could, you could use a right angle drill, try to get some drill bits the right length and try to go into the hole. You know, I have a right angle drill here. Some of you guys are saying, but I don't have a right angle drill. Well, the worst case scenario, you put a, a drill bit right through the front of the wall here above your baseboard and drill down um, and you'll end up with a slit. You'll end up with a kind of a slit, whatever size drill you use, half inch, whatever. You kind of go into the wall here and kind of down at an angle and you could go through the base plate there. Custom installer shouldn't be making unnecessary holes like that. So for that reason, I've got this half inch flexible. We're going to go in and I'm going to go do two holes because we're running two speaker wires, two coax cables and a cat six. I don't know if I'm gonna get all those through a half inch hole. I'm better off just to run two holes. So let's go ahead. That's one right there. If I pull the drill bit out of the hole, I like to run the drill bit in the forward direction. So I'm pulling back with the drill going forward, the drill bit spinning forward, and that'll ream out the hole and kind of make it clean. Two. Okay, and you want to be careful. Don't go down. Don't get too greedy and go down through the ceiling below. That's it, two holes. Now I'm through the floor into the ceiling space below. I want to take a moment to talk about a, a tool that I feel like every custom installer should have. It's going to be an in-wall scope. This is the one I bought, I don't know, probably 10 years ago. And, and it's done me a lot of good. It's rigid, made by rigid, just like this. And you, you turn it on here and it's got a little light on it and you can kind of see it's on the wall. And then this was, this has been a good one. Um, it's been a good one, but the problem is I don't like about this is that you have to make too big of a hole. You gotta make a three quarter inch hole just to get the scope inside the wall. Sometimes that's not an option. I wanted to get away from that because the size of the hole. And I also wanted to get away from the fact that like, that was a really expensive, scope and uh I, I just thought it was kind of cost prohibitive to most um homeowners so i started looking around for a new scope something that i thought you guys would be able to afford and something that i thought um would be also solve all the problems that, that i'm having and so i reached out to test long told them i want to try out their product they sent me one so i've been super excited to to, to do this video because i knew this would be the first time i got to actually try this scope out. So uh, I'm not going to do an unboxing. This is not really commercial for test long. Um, but I, I just kind of want to show you guys what's going on. I've got my, my scope here. I, I want it, or this is the screen. I wanted a screen that was separate. They have some that will kind of go into your phone and it'll pair to your phone. I didn't want to go that route. Number one, because I wanted to have a high quality image I could show you guys and I wanted to be able to record. Um, but I also, I couldn't do that with the phone option, right? Um, but I also wanted to have something, I just don't like to pair my phone. That's just more technology that you have to deal with and then my phone can drop, I'm using power tools. I just don't like the idea of my phone being out in my working environment to get lost, to get stepped on, broken, scratched, whatever. So I wanted an own standalone unit that I knew I could charge and it would work on its own, not having to rely on anything else. So, and also if you use your phone to pair with a scope, there's a slight delay. And that slight delay can make it really hard if I'm trying to snag a wire from one side and I've got somebody else trying to feed me a glow rod and we got a string and we're magnets and there's a little bit of delay and the communication can get all weird. I don't want to deal with any of that stuff. I want it to be instantaneous. So we're going to give this one a shot today and, and hopefully it doesn't disappoint. But I really think if you guys want to start doing custom installs and you don't want to make holes in your house, you got to get a scope. This is going to make the job way easier, way faster, and you're not going to be making unnecessary holes. If you don't want to put forth the money for a scope, that's fine, but that just means you're going to make extra holes where you run the risk of making extra damage, drilling into wire, a pipe, uh, um, air conditioning vents and ducts and things like that. If you have a scope, you can kind of make a tiny little hole, just barely pass through, send your scope through. I'll show you guys how to use it. We're going to, most of my installations from now on are really going to start using scopes because in the real, in the real world, 
if it gets even slightly complicated or slightly risky, I don't play games. I pull my scope out first thing. So uh, let's, let's pull this thing out and get started. I gotta tell you guys, after using this Teslong in-wall scope, I was so impressed with the product that I worked out a partnership with them. It was incredible. I thought the features were great. Super easy to use. I love the dual cameras, the camera, the front-facing camera, the side-facing camera. I thought the audio was great. The picture quality is great. Lots of features. It was just everything. I got no complaints. It really surpassed everything that I thought it would be. So I worked out a partnership. If you guys use this code, AllenClegg underscore 10% off, you'll get 10% off anything on their website. They've got endoscopes, boroscopes, like rifle boroscopes and otoscopes. Oh, gosh, they have so many things on here. And you guys can get 10% off of everything by using that code. Um, so check them out. Get yourself something cool. For the record, the endoscope that I'm using is the NTS 500, the endoscope with dual lens. Mine has this extra long extension. Um, I don't know if I needed that in uh, retrospect. Um, I got it just, just in case. But looking back, I, I don't know for installation purposes I need anything more than 10 feet long. Um, but it is really cool to have. Guys, I'm really impressed with everything they have. Check them out. Buy yourself something cool. Don't forget to use my coupon code. Holy smokes. I am in love already. So I got this camera because I wanted to be able to record and then show you guys a really good shot inside the wall and then upload it so you guys can see exactly what I'm seeing. And so I started playing around with this thing. Dude, super cool. It comes with a, um, a, a slot for a 32 gigabyte micro SD card. Um, it has two cameras on it. I can have a camera going forward or I can have a camera that goes to the side, which is super useful because sometimes I wanna see ahead of me, but sometimes I wanna pop through a wall and look, and look immediately what's on the other side of that stud. Like right when I go through the hole, I wanna see what's on the other side of that stud. Down below, there's a top plate, right? The top of the wall downstairs has a top plate. If I wanted to go into the top plate and maybe run wires from the attic straight through this right into that wall, that's what you would do. You would drill the hole, look through the hole with your camera and to see if the top plate is right below it. I'm gonna go look at that now and give you guys a shot. What's going on? Oh, look at that. This is the ceiling downstairs. And that piece of wood, that piece of wood right there, that is the top plate of the bathroom of that that extra room downstairs. So we're actually like right where I want to be. How cool is that? When we go downstairs, you'll you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. I know my house, so I know what I'm looking at. When I when I did my pre-measuring to to kind of estimate where I thought I was gonna pop through, I thought I was gonna pop through on the other side of this joist right here. And then when I drilled the hole upstairs, I thought that I wasn't. I thought I actually landed in this room here. Comes to find out, my the pre-measuring was right. I'm on the other side of this joist. I had my daughter kind of tap the glow rod all around. I couldn't find it down here, but I could hear it. I could hear it right on the other side of this joist. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole through the joist, and I'm going to use the camera to look inside there. I pulled the glow rod out. I put a little string with a loop on it, and I put the glow rod back down. So I'm going to take the camera, and I'm going to try to see if I can see the glow rod with the string, and I'll try to hook it and pull it out here. To do that, what I do is I take some string. This is electrician string. I, I used electrician string like crazy. I really like it. I'm going to tie a knot in it just like that. That's about, I don't know, two inch knot. And I'm going to take it and I'm going to tape it to the end of a glow rod. And I'm going to tape it kind of lightly, just like one wrap. Because I want it to hold, but not hold that much. Okay, that's like one wrap around. I'm going to take this and shove this into the hole that I drilled at the bottom of the wall. Scope might come in handy. You can't find it. Is that a rat? So now it's in there. Now what I do is I take my scope and I put a little hook on the end of my scope. Right there. This scope comes with a little hook. 
If you don't have a hook, you can, you can just make a hook out of a coat hanger and then tape it to the end. That works too. Can we tap? Oh. Oh, great. Insulation. Ugh. No, that touches you. You can have lots of sneezes. Okay, with the scope, you can see the hook right here at the end. We're going to go into the hole and we're going to see if we can find that string on the glow rod. There's the glow rod. This is where it's really handy to have a second person on the other side working the glow rod. So I'm going to have my wife go move the glow rod. I can see my loop right there, but it's going to be a little hard. So this is where it's nice to have a second person to move the glow rod around for you. Are you ready? Okay, pull back a little bit. Oh, too much. Remember, Melissa, everything a little. Okay, hold on, hold on, stop. Spin it. Spin. Hold it right there. Don't move. Okay, I've got the string. We're going to pull it. Hopefully we don't break the hook. I got it, Lee. Good job. We got it. So now, what you do is you tie the string to something, because if you don't, that string might accidentally get pulled out. And that's kind of a pain in the butt. You don't want to do that again. Can you imagine how hard that'd be if we didn't have a scope? Holy smokes. Boom. And we got it. I'm sure you guys can probably hear the birds chirping in the background. We just got done incubating some baby chickens. I'm really sorry about that. Um, anyways, uh, with the hardest part of the installation done, it's time to run the wires from here to the bedroom above us and then from the bedroom above us up into the attic. From the attic, some of the wires are going to go to the rack. Uh, but the speaker cables are going to go over to the volume control that's going to control the outdoor speaker. So, here we go. Um, right now on this run, I'm going to run a Cat6 cable, I'm going to run the speaker cable, and I'm going to run an RG6. When you tape this together, as you guys saw, like getting the strings in here was pretty hard. It's going to be really important that you guys do a good job taping this head. I, I can't express that enough. Getting the strings in was so hard. If the head comes apart and you lose a wire, you have to redo everything, dude. It's a pain in the butt. So just do a good job taping the head on. So what I do is I stagger the wires. It doesn't matter which one you have in the front. And I'm going to start taping about 8 inches back, 10 inches back. I'm using electrical tape. And I'm just going to kind of tape it nice and tight. Okay? And every time I get to the end of a wire, right there, see I'm getting to the end of a wire? I'm going to kind of make a little bit of ramp leading up to it. So otherwise, there's going to be kind of a catch. It doesn't have to be perfectly smooth. If you put too much tape right there, it's going to catch, the tape is going to catch too. So you just kind of want to smoothen that out just as much as you can. Boom. All right. Then I'm going to tape on, after I've taped the head together, then I tape the string. The first thing I do is I'm going to just put a couple wraps of tape, the string down here at the bottom. Okay. Boom. And that's just to kind of hold it in place. That, that provides no strength. It's just going to hold in place when I put on what we call half hitches. To do a half hitch, you take the string and you make a loop in the string. I just made a loop in the string and you put the wire through the loop and then you pull it up and it should look like that. See how the string comes down here? It goes into the half hitch and comes up here. And I like to put in three half hitches. So there's one. I just made a twist. Boom. Put the wire through. If you put the wire through and then pull it and the string just comes off, that's because you did it in the wrong, you put the, you did the loop in the wrong direction. So if I do the loop in, let's see, this would be that direction there, and I put the wire through and I go to pull, it just comes apart. So you put it through like that, and then you put the wire through. Boom, I've got three half hitches, 
And then I'm going to run the tape up the half hitches. Half hitches, snitches. Okay, just like this. When I get over the top of the half hitch, tape it down because you don't want any snags. Okay. Boom, tape that sucker down. It's going up here to the top. Boom, tape that sucker down and then all the way to the tip top. Make sure you get a good head right there. Bam. This string will break before it slips out of those half hitches. So with that, we're ready to pull it in. Okay, Melissa, go ahead and pull. Looking at this, I'll drill here. I got the wires here, they go that way. This is a weird setup. There's two studs next to each other. Typically it's just one stud and you drill in the middle. Here I've got two studs. I don't know, it's weird. I'm gonna kind of go in kind of towards the middle, but away from those wires. Oh man, it's a hard place to drill, dude. I think we got it, maybe. Let's try to get the glow rods down in there. Okay, so I've got somebody down in the bedroom. My wife's down in the bedroom. She'll pull the glow rods out. Tape on some string, we'll pull the string out. And then we'll use the string to pull the wire. There we go. There's the string. So I'll just tie the string to one of these studs so we don't lose it. Get ready to start pulling some wire. These are the existing wires that I installed years ago. Here's the string that's going up into the attic. Here's the wire that my wife and I just pulled in. Um, so we got the speaker cable and the Cat6 and that head that I tied on with the half hitches and the string. I just cut off all the extra strings so now I've got this. But this is nice because now what I'm going to do is just tie these two strings together. This string going to the head and this string that's going up into the attic. To tie them together, this is what I do. I put the two strings just like that. Okay. Then I tie them in a knot. In one knot. That's the strongest way to do it. They'll never come undone. Okay. And what I need to do is once we pull these wires up, we're going to pull two more wires behind it. Now remember I said don't ever pull wires on top of each other. We're going to do that in this case because the wire that I drilled is definitely big enough that when we pull the two wires on top of these later, it's not going to burn these wires. There's enough slack in there. So I'm just going to send this string here. This string is going to be how we're going to pull the next run into the attic. So I don't have to uh, use a, a glow rod again. And this one here, I'm just going to kind of tape loosely. And here's the most important part. When you get to the end, since I'm going to undo this tape in the attic, Fold it over, make it a little easy on myself. Okay? My wife is gonna be down here pulling wire from the basement down below out of the boxes, feeding this wire up as I'm in the attic pulling a string. Let's go do that now. Okay, guys, I'm really sorry for the lighting in here. Uh, this is a real install, so this is a real attic, and it's really dark. Uh, my string, I know you can't see it. Uh, when I was up here last time, I drilled the holes. I tied a string to the rafters. You always tie your string, okay? So I'm just going to undo the string and pull and the wire should come up. There we go. Right there. And I've got this trailer string. So I gave myself a little tag because I'm a homie. And then I'll tie the string to the rafter again and use it for the next pull. Alan, you're so smart. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. Okay, so I need 25 feet of this blue from there. And then this one right here is gonna go that way to the volume control, uh, sorry, it's gonna go that way to the volume control um, and then down the wall. So I'm just gonna run out the slack and run the next sets of wires. To measure, the, the quick and easy way to measure is just to do arm lengths. Each arm length is five feet. So I need to go five, to get to the top of the rack and then 25 to get to the racks. That's 30 feet. 
So I'll just go measure six arm lengths. That's one, two, three, four, four, five, six. Boom. Okay. And I'm going to take this slack, kind of set it aside, and I'll run it down to my rack later. And then the speaker cable is just going to run that way. Um, I kind of have a pathway of all my wires. It's going to run this way. And then it's going to drop down to my volume control. I'll show you guys how to do that later. I'm not going to worry about filming the boring walk down there. You'll just see me dropping it down. 